Welcome everybody. I can see there's a lot getting on the feed now. We're just getting ourselves organised. G'day Amanda. How you going Frank? G'day Paul. Susan, welcome. Uh, Eugene, good to see you on the feed. Howdy Lee, g'day Paul. Rob, we have got another great show for you guys this evening. Ian, Richard, so many coming on now there, Margaret and uh, Whitney, thank you for joining us. Glenn, Chris, the Coffee Boys kid, g'day buddy, how you doing? Glenn, Tom, Brian Smith, welcome, Walter Scrap, uh, Robert, uh, g'day Brad, hi Josh, Adrian, Mark, good to see you on the food, Veronica, g'day Nicole, welcome Jamie, hi Ken, we're getting organised, we're not going to be too far off a start now, let's get the last bits of uh, in place, Derek, welcome, Gareth, Drew, Stuart, Terry, everybody's coming on. It's going to be a, a really good show again this evening. Just about starting to fall into place for uh, a start very, very shortly, guys. Just getting it all warmed up here. Digger's Dream, welcome, John. Stumpy's on, Sean, Dave, Alan, Page. I think we're just about uh, getting set here to uh, kick us off for uh, the next episode. Welcome to the Mind Lab Show, Australia's most informative prospecting live stream. This is a place where you'll get all the tips, tricks and super deals for your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. In this episode, we're going to check out the latest gold prospecting and treasure hunting news. We're going to learn about the difference between a normal and inverted signal on some MindLab pulse induction detectors. We'll launch an exciting new bundle inspired by one of our favourite contributors to the show. I'll answer your questions and we've got a fantastic live viewer giveaway. I'm Gold Digger Dave, let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. That signal so sweet when I hear that beep beep, couldn't think of many things better. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. Okay, that's got the opening out of the way. Let's get straight into our gold price. And uh, after a few days in relative stability in the gold price, it's taken a bit of a hit, dropping down to $2,610 per troy ounce. That's around $50 an ounce less than last time or last week. So as you can see, it's a significant fall. Overall, the price of gold has dropped about 6% in the last 30 days. So it's a case of don't panic and let's see where the price takes us over the next few weeks. Now, call up on that, uh, I just wanted to give a big shout out and thank you to the over 40 people who booked and attended the Miners Den Mine Lab certified training sessions. Now, there were four sessions uh, run over the weekend in Bendigo and the Central Gold Fields, and there was a 5,000, there was a GPX 6,000, there was a 7,000, and an SDC 2300. Now, here's a quick look at some of the snaps from the weekend. Now, they're actually, excuse me, <coughs> Bless me. Um, there are actually eight bits uh, found with the GPX 6000 over the weekend. Miners Den is the leading training organisation for the Mine Lab High to uh, mid range gold prospecting machines. And we're consistently offering our certified training in Victoria and New South Wales. 
Okay, what's that mean for you guys? If you've purchased a MyLab SDC 2300, a GPX 5000 or the 6000, even the GPZ 7000 through a MyLab Miner's Den Metal Detector Superstore, then you're allowed to book a free training session with us on those machines. We've listed the next lot of training dates for Bendigo and they're coming up on the 18th and 19th of June. So on the 18th of June we've got the GPX um, 6000 uh, uh, training coming up uh, on the 2300 in that morning. Uh, the GPZ, sorry, let me start that again. There it is. The Saturday, the 18th, we've got the SDC 23 and the 7000 training coming up. On uh, Sunday, the 19th, we have a GPX 6000. Now I think that session's getting fairly full, so. Uh, we might look to slot another one of those in possibly uh, later uh, on that weekend. We'll just see if we can organise that for everyone now that's started to fill up. Of course, uh, our Sydney training sessions, they're the only Mine Lab certified training sessions in New South Wales, and they're back in June as well. Uh, in these training sessions, it's one detector model per session. Um, so here again, we've got the uh, Saturday the 25th, it's got the SDC, uh, the GPZ is on also the Saturday the 25th in the afternoon, uh, the 6000 training, it's coming up again on the 26th of June on the Sunday, it's a, an AM session there, a 9am session, if you bought a machine through one of our stores, it's free. Book yourself in, get the correct training, and we'll certainly be able to get you on the right path to finding some gold nuggets or coins and relics out in the field. Miners Den, the Mine Lab experts. Now, the shows and expos are coming up, so we've had a busy couple of months with a whole variety of shows and expos. We have a bit of a break now, but we'll be back again shortly, and here's just a bit of a sneak peek on what's coming up uh, shortly. The Great Outdoor 4x4 show, uh, that's in Mildura, that's on the 25th, 26th, and 24th, 25th, and 26th of June. Uh, if you're up that way and you're needing something, uh, drop in and see us on the stand. I'll be up there with Denise on that one. There's a National 4x4 show show as well in Sydney, that's uh, on the 22nd, 23rd and 24th of July, following straight after that it's Adelaide's turn at the Adelaide Caravan and Camping Show, uh, that's the 27th to the 31st of July and Miners Den will have a stand at all of those shows and some really, really good deals coming along for you as well. Uh, we'll have some more, event, more details on all these events as we get a little closer. Now, Demo Days, uh, they're the next one I've got on the list here. The Demo Days are a Miner's Den exclusive. So Mine Lab Metal Detector Demo Days have been a great way for budding prospectors or treasure hunters to learn a little more about the hobby and see what type of equipment are available. These free sessions go through the range of Mine Lab's world leading metal detectors and give you the price points. Talk about any special features each unit may have. Uh, once the session's completed at the local park, you'll have a better understanding of what the hobby is all about and which mine lab machine you may wish to use. A short walk back to the store and you'll find a sausage on the barbecue, a team of well-trained mine lab experts to assist you further. Who knows, we may even get you out digging a few holes. The next uh, one of these sessions is uh, coming up at Miner's Den Mine Lab Metal Detector Superstores. So they're in Adelaide, Bendigo, uh, they're in Mitcham in Melbourne and Penrith in Sydney. And uh, this all happens on Saturday, June the 4th. The sessions kick off at 10.30am at the store. So look, rock up about quarter past, so about 15 minutes earlier prior to the start time uh, uh, to attend these. All you've got to do is really head to minersden.com.au, hit the events tab, or use the link in the feed and sign yourself up. We just need to know who's coming so that we uh, have an idea on what we need to cater for and things like that. And these sessions are looking quite good. There's a number of people starting to book in now, so you're certainly going to learn the best way to start the hobby of prospecting. Uh, next up, uh, we had a look last week at the uh, Adelaide store signage and it's well on the way to being installed. It's time now to show you what the finished product will look like on the Penrith store. Then you can see the signage there, uh, we're just getting the uh, final details finished off and uh, I think that's uh, going to make it much easier to find our store. It's taken a little while to get there but we're, we're there now. So look, up next um, I've thrown in a special presentation here to correct some misinformation that has been parroted off by a multi-branded New South Wales dealer. Look, this information is wrong 
and it will lead you to uh, miss some gold. So, look, let's uh, go into this a little bit now. Um, uh, it brought the usual bunch of information, came from uh, varying prospecting lives. What I saw last week was just uh, astounding. It was the wrong information that was being delivered about uh, how to use uh, the machines and about their responses. So let's clear this up. MyLab's pulse induction metal detectors have a different signal response depending on target size. Mostly you will find that the MyLab PI machines are factory preset to operate in a normal signal response. A normal signal response? Well, a normal signal response is characterised by a rising pitch followed by a falling pitch. Okay, the signal followed by a falling signal pitch. When the detector coil is passed over a metal object, uh, that is uh, normal, uh, way it normally works. When the detector swung over a large object, when in the normal uh, response mode, uh, a larger metal object, uh, then uh, the response is characterised by a dipping pitch first, followed by a rising pitch. Now, uh, this chart from the GPX 5000 manual shows this in the diagram there. So you can see there, rising tone, then falling tone. Uh, on the second one there, on a deep target or a big target, a dipping tone and then a rising tone. Um, certain mine lab detectors have the ability for you to invert this signal. So when the signal response is inverted, the following occurs. An inverted signal response is characterised by a falling signal pitch followed by a rising signal pitch when the detector is passed over a small metal object. When the detector coil is swung over a larger metal object, the signal response is characterised by a rising signal pitch followed by a falling signal pitch. In other words, it's exactly the opposite of what normal was. Normal or inverted. So an inverted signal, we can see that there. This time your small target dips first, then rises in pitch. Uh, your bigger target rises and then dips in pitch. Now, the signal response feature that's here um, uh, was in the machine anyway, but people tended to believe that some hearing, some types of hearing that we have uh, were better able to hear a rising pitch against the threshold target tone. If that's the case, then you would have an advantage by inverting the signal response when hunting for larger targets as they would rise in pitch then dip. Supposedly, you're able to better hear the large target this way. I filmed a short clip this morning and have tried to, uh, tried to show you uh, the difference between an inverted signal response and a normal signal response on a small target. Now I've actually uh, physically changed the, sig the uh, inverted the signal on the 5000 to get this to happen. Um, let's have a look now and let's just see if you can pick the difference in the way the signal response is in normal or inverted. Okay, now I'm going to run over this small target with the GPX uh, 5000 in its uh, normal signal response mode and give you a listen to that. Next, I want to have a listen. I'm going to actually flick the machine in the back on the 5000 here. I'm just going to go down and I'm going to actually set now the response to inverted. So uh, the factory preset on the machine is for normal, which is what we were just listening to. We've now gone into an inverted signal response. And we're going to have a listen over the machine, over the same target with that. You can see clearly from that, there is a difference in that the first one has the signal rising in pitch, the second one has the signal inverted or dipping in pitch in the first instance. Hope that helps clear up a little bit on inverted signals. Now look, well, we saw how that worked. I hope you can hear the difference between those uh, two signals there. Um, what we were finding was uh, on the video that I saw, the live I saw the other week, uh, they were actually running it over a target, a uh, trashy target, then running it over a piece of uh, gold, then running it over a trashy target. Uh, it's got nothing to do whether the object is gold or trash. It has to do with size of target, and it'll all depend on um, how that response comes up. Let's get my beanie straight. 
straight there. Um, uh, so no amount of listening to this piece of trash and repeating over it a zillion times uh, will do anything other than try and uh, track the actual uh, piece of uh, that you're listening to uh, out. Uh, it's not going to help you identify the difference between gold and trash. Whatever you do, if you're one of the people who've picked up on this garbage, do not try this with your machine. Really don't. You will just be leaving gold in the ground. If you're out on that session where you're being shown how to do these kind of things, it's probably a very good idea to get yourself booked in on a Miners Den MineLab certified training session and we can get you the correct information on how to use the machine that you purchased in a small group and focusing just on the unit that you bought rather than multiple brands or multiple models all in the one training session. Now look, there's a quick summary of what we can do here with the uh, MineLab range of detectors on the GPX 4000, uh, 4500 and the 5000. The default signal response is set to normal except when you're using the deep mode. In deep mode, the signal response is factory preset to inverted. You can change that uh, just by going into the back menu on those machines and altering it between inverted or between uh, normal. Uh, whatever you're looking for, you want to have that target rising in pitch, well it suits my ears when it's rising in pitch and that's uh, my preference. The SDC 2300 will also uh, invert the signal too on the larger objects but you don't have any control over that, that's inside the machine. The 6000, same thing happens again, no control on it, you don't need the control, it's just a, a complicated background thing on why that actually happens. Um, and the signal response is not able to be altered, as I said, on either of those. Um, I'm not even exactly sure what changeover points on where it flips between an inverted or a normal signal response. The other signal that sometimes occurs is what we call a warbly signal. Now this type of signal response occurs when the machine is right on the edge of where the response changes from high-low to low-high. Okay, this is caused, uh, that warble is caused by the, the object being so close to the changeover point that it's going high, low, low, high, high, low, and it's actually uh, flipping between the two, which causes your signal to warble um, instead of being a clear signal. Once again, it pays to purchase from a MineLab metal detector superstore. You're going to get the correct information. We use the machines. A lot of the people in my stores are all out prospecting and learning stuff. You're going to get a personalised training session on those better machines and of course you're always going to get the best deal in Australia. That's enough on that one, let's move on. Uh, let's have a look at the uh, this week's weekly viewer giveaway. And I've got a ripper in tonight, it's going to give you a bit more flexibility on what you might do. The MindLab Show's live viewer giveaways have got a lot of important kit into people's hands and this week is no exception with both our Facebook and YouTube friends in with a chance to take home one of four. $100 gift vouchers to the Miners Den Metal Detector Superstores. That's right, two for Facebook and two for YouTube. How do I enter, you ask? Easy. Let us know you're in the feed with a comment or a hi or any other thing that might uh, float your boat. You know, we're happy to hear that you're there and then just sit back and enjoy the show. I'll announce the awards, uh, winners towards the end of the live. Good luck and uh, happy prospecting there. Now look, recently while I was out treasure detecting a game with the Coffee Bush Kid, we sat down and we had a bit of a chat about what the kid sees as essential kit. Here's what uh, he had to say now. Well, we've been out here having a crack with the Equinox 800 right in the centre of Bendigo. I thought this would be a great time just to stop, give ourselves a break for a minute and ask uh, the Coffee Bush Kid. When you're heading out on an adventure or treasure hunting like this, what are the must-haves that you have in your kit if you're going out for uh, a session for the morning, maybe even for the day? Well, first off, first off, is the old mighty Mine Lab Equinox 800. You know you're swinging right when you've got one of those in your hand. That would be, if you were making a list, that's number one. You've got to have that. No Absolutely worries, the Equinox 800. Off. That comes with the 11 inch coil. You cut your teeth with that, it's absolutely brilliant. The next thing, like everyone knows what I use, but the next thing, if, if you had to list them, would actually be the old ProFind 35 pinpointer. I am lost without this. 
it's sort of nearly like you shouldn't be dependent upon a piece of equipment, but by gee, with one of these things, it makes life easy. You can find the targets, like when we're doing here yep. in the park, you dig a small hole. If you're slightly out, that's fine. Your pinpointer will find where it is. You can dig it out and you've only made a small hole. You haven't made a great big one. It might be mushroomed underneath if you didn't come down on it properly. Yep. But you've got to have one of these. If you're out in the bush, the last thing you want to do is put your digger through a cricket belt buckle. With yes. these, as we've discussed previously, you can drop your sensitivity once you're in the hole and find out the exact shape of the, of the relic, then you can safely retrieve it. All's good, it doesn't end in tears. Fantastic. That, that so would be the second one. That's uh, the Equinox 800 is your machine of choice when we're out here. Yep. Uh, obviously, the MindLab Pro find 35 pinpointer. Uh, I find that essential also. I'd yep. be, it would just make your job so much easier retrieving the target, as you said. And with that, always carry a spare battery. I run rechargeables, so I've got one in the unit, I've got one in my pouch. You know, two kilometres away from the vehicle, you don't want to have to go back for the battery. No, that's exactly You need it. it with you. The third one. The third one. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the mighty six-inch coil. I've always, I've always wondered about buying two of these. Yep. One on the machine and one on the gold chain around my neck. Okay, I'd very good, very love good. Love the six-inch coil. As we've seen, in trashy sites, rubbishy sites, whether it be a park, whether it be a rubbish dump beside the road. This gets in between all the signals, instead of having five or six signals under yep. an 11 inch coil or more under a 15, you're only battling with two or three in the one area. And we've seen today, you can just really, really finely tune where it is. Yep. And uh, that certainly has made it a lot easier. And as you said, with what we've been doing here today, I've been getting you to check a couple of mine because you've actually got the smaller coil on. And given you're the master, uh, we can nail it right down and dig them out. And dig out the half pennies. Absolutely. We've got scored one of them, a couple of cars as well. So, okay, you've got, uh, looks like you're pretty well set up with your equipment there. You've got your pinpointer, you've got your six inch coil that you've added to your kit. You um, need a good digger a good for digger. number four. Yep. Now we're using the Tiger, or I'm using the Tiger Blade. There is the Tiger Cub. I like the blade because it suits my area. My area is hard, quartzy ground, or in fact, rubbish dumps where you've got glass and steel. And with a narrow entry point, you can weave this in and around get out what you want to. It's not designed to take out great clumps of soil like you're digging a hole. Yep. We're only taking small stuff out. It's got a nice long length to it. You get it in, you can you can push it in because you have the least resistance of surface area. Yep. And you can retrieve your target very successfully with one of these. I absolutely love this. Okay, so look, uh, we've now got the digging covered, we've got the uh, electronic gear with the coil and the machine and yep. the pinpointer. Um, what else would you think you could throw in that uh, we might uh, also be almost an essential, I would say? I would say you need some sort of pouch. And the, that might be a funny thing to say, but as I've said time and time again, you go out, we're in a park. We're digging bottle top after bottle top after bottle top. All of a sudden your pocket's starting to fill up and you go, ah, oh, it's another 16 signal. Yep. I'm not going to dig it. And that's where you walk past the post 1946 threepence that you've been looking for. Yep, yep. If you have somewhere to put the rubbish, your fines, carry a drink bottle, carry your brushes for cleaning your coins or your squirty bottle for cleaning all your silver. Yep, yep. You need something like this. It just gives you peace of mind that, yep, I've got somewhere where I can put every single piece of rubbish and at the end of the day, I upend it into a bin. If you are questioned as to what you are doing in a park, you can always use the old, I am cleaning up the environment 
Absolutely. And there it all is. And that's what I've done before. And uh, that's a, that is an essential. Not only that, it encourages you, it encourages you to take all of your stuff out. Yep. Therefore, if you come back, you're not going to have to redig those signals no. uh, down the track if your new technology comes through for us. That's exactly right. If you're in a in a park area where you get lots of people over summer, yep. If you have gone over and sort of made this patch your own, cleaned up all the deep rubbish and everything like that in it. You're only finding all the surface stuff. It the just becomes yep. uh, easier year after year after year. And you get your 30, your fifty dollars worth of one and two dollar yep. coins each year. You're laughing. So this this is really good just for peace of mind uh, and somewhere to put all your stuff. Well look, there you have it. That's all of the kit that the coffee bush kid uses when he goes out on his treasure hunting adventures. Now look, I reckon maybe we could uh, look, possibly. We could even make a bundle out of that. Oh, could sound like a good idea, couldn't it? Absolutely. That's all for the moment. Thanks from Gold Digger Dave and the Coffee Bush Kid on the Mind Lab Show. Well, that's what the uh, Coffee Bush Kid uses when he's out with his Equinox 800. If you'd like to keep up to date with the adventures of the Coffee Bush Kid, why not head over and like his channels? Well, that's youtube.com slash the coffee bush kid. It's instagram.com slash the coffee bush kid. It's facebook.com slash the coffee bush kid. Look, if you happen to be in the uh, Bendigo store uh, picking up some bits and pieces, you may even catch him in person. So, uh, a great contributor. Love the work there. Thank you very much for that. We're heading straight now into our gold discovery stories and uh, amateur prospectors believe they have rediscovered a rich source of gold originally found by a working party from Shepparton during the height of the Great Depression. The team, who calls themselves the Chain Gang, made the discovery after years of detective work sparked by two old newspaper articles. The modern day prospecting gang members who wish to remain anonymous to protect their discovery believe with a little experience in prospecting, uh, the 1930s team extracted some gold before losing the trail of the sea. Reefs are not always continuous, continuous. they often have breaks and shifts uh, caused by geological activity. Using modern technology, we have located the seam, uh, where the seam continues. The geologist in the group said it's some distance from the early diggings and uh, deeper than the original find, but it is richer in gold and an amazing discovery. The location is possibly somewhere near Rushworth and it remains tightly held secret among the group, but they have secured new mining leases and based on the initial assays say there could be up to 45,000 ounces of recoverable gold worth nearly $87 million at today's gold price. Our next segment has proven to be very popular and uh, with all of that uh, gold discovery, gold stories there, we hope that works out for them. Now look, our next segment has proven to be very popular and it's the, the Coffee Bush Kid back again with uh, What Have I Found? G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and today is another segment in What Have I Found? Well, this is today's little mystery item. It's got slots in it, it's round, you can see a pin in there as well. Is it some sort of coggy thing or what? Don't know. Let's have a look at what a fuller one looks like. Has anyone got what it is yet? There. Yeah. It's an interesting little part and you'd be surprised at how many you find in the gold fields. What that is, is actually off an umbrella. And it's the part that holds the, the spokes, if you like, and it goes up and down the shaft. But it's not called the spoke holder shafty movie thing. It's actually just called a runner. And the spoky bits on the umbrella are actually called spreaders. Very uneventful names, actually. But you'd be quite surprised at how many you would find in the gold fields. Sometimes we just find those bits, but it's not actually that often that you will find the whole segment. And that slot there, yeah, it goes on to the imaginative part called the top spring, as opposed 
to the bottom spring on the umbrella. But they're always an interesting little find. That's a very human piece of history. So there we have it. The little mystery object is a runner off an umbrella. I'm the coffee bush kid, and that is what I have found. Well, that's uh, fantastic uh, info there again from uh, the Coffee Boys Kid. And uh, I've been doing a bit of thinking about um, uh, the stuff that the Coffee Boys Kid keeps with him as standard kit. And I've decided we're going to launch a brand new Equinox 800 package deal. Let's have a look at what's included. So we've got the, the MindLab Equinox 800 metal detector, the, the world's best performing multi-IQ metal detector and uh, the MindLab 6 inch round coil is an add-on that you can get with that, so we've thrown that into the package. Uh, the MindLab ProFine 35, the pinpointer, well that's what uh, Coffee Bush uses, so uh, let's throw that in as well. A uh, Tiger Blade and Sheath, a Grey Fines pouch and a Prospector Scoop, all thrown in as the Coffee Bush Kid package. The total value of the package is uh, around about uh, $1,995.90, uh, uh, that's the recommended retail price. Now look, your low price on all of this gear, so it's everything that you need to get out there and have a crack, uh, is $1,599. One of the best deals in Australia that gives you everything that you need for uh, heading out with an Equinox 800. Now the advantage of getting everything you need all in the one hit is that you're saving yourself a small fortune. This deal saves you just under 400 bucks over the whole kit. And of course, you still get the fantastic service that uh, is available at the Miners Den MindLab Metal Detector Superstores. And we're there to give you some support and assistance as you uh, start your journey with your machine. Miners Den Australia, the trusted name in MindLab Metal Detectors. Now look, uh, it's coming up now, time for a tech tip from our very own Miners Den MindLab technician, Nathan, let's see what he has to say this time. G'day, I'm Nathan from Miners Den, and tonight's tech tip on the MindLab show is how to pair a set of Bluetooth Equinox headphones to an Equinox 800. All right, so first thing you'll want to do is turn the detector on. So to do that, you press this power button here, and then give it a moment to turn on. Then after it's turned on, you'll want to press this, Wi-Fi, this um, wireless button here, which is on the side here. So press that, and then you'll see on the screen that the um, little flashing light of the um, wireless button, and that's it in pairing mode. And now we'll try to pair to the headphones. All right, now with the Equinox headphones, you have three buttons. You have a plus, a minus, and the middle button is the power button. So plus and minus is volume control, and the middle button is the power and pairing mode button. So what you want to do is press the power button, and then keep holding it down until it give, goes into pairing mode. And you'll know it's in pairing mode when it gives you, an, on the LED, a nice blue and red flashing. So that's in pairing mode, and it'll also give you a bit of a sound to notify you as well. And then when it pairs to the headphones, to the detector, it'll um, stop flashing, and then you'll start hearing sound and signal from the detector. And, yep, there we go, and now they've paired, and now you can see a little icon up the top of the headphones being paired. That's how you pair a set of Equinox Bluetooth headphones. And this has been a tech tip for the MindLab show. Now look, that's a fantastic bundle. Um, like I said, it's got everything you uh, you needed in the kit there. I did see a comment uh, just while we were in the, the clip was on there, but, but just talking about um, uh, it should come with a Coffee Bush Kid signature. We'll have to do some negotiating with a Coffee Bush Kid, but uh, I'd expect that that signature being the collector's item that it will grow to is likely to be very, very expensive. So we'll, we'll, we'll thrash that one out with a Coffee Bush Kid in the next few weeks. Okay, now look, let's have a look at a couple of entries from our monthly Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt Facebook competition. First up, we have uh, a photo from uh, Kent who uh, found himself a nice little stash of gold from panning his bag of pay dirt. That's uh, great work there, uh, Kent. Uh, we also have a photo here from uh, Malcolm, uh, and Malcolm has scored uh, uh, 0.291 grams of gold from his panning efforts. And again, well done there, Malcolm. Both uh, Kent and Malcolm, uh, Malcolm are now both in the running to win a $50 voucher to spend at any of the Miners Den MindLab metal detector stores just for taking the time to upload a photo with a gourmet pay dirt finds to our pinned 
Facebook page. Now look, it really couldn't be easier, and of course, always remember to put your collectible token, if you grab one of those and you get one of those in the bag, drop that into uh, the photo as well, love to see uh, when they're coming up. Uh, buy a bag, a tub, or a bucket of Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt, and make sure you have plenty of fun panning it off and honing your skills. Take a photo of the gold, post it to the pin post on the competition post on our Facebook page, you'll then be in the running to win that 50 bucks voucher, and you can spend that at any of our stores. Uh, there's a new one for each month. So Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt, it's the richest pay dirt in Australia. Grab yours today. As I say, it's no ordinary gravel. Okay, now look, we're moving straight in now to our coin and treasure stories this time. So we've got uh, our first story coming out. It's uh, in a rare and stunning discovery. A metal detectorist has unearthed more than a thousand Roman coins in Budendorf, Switzerland. Daniel Luden was prospecting with his metal detector on the grounds of Winston Castle. Well, it's some castle. I can't really pronounce the name in Budendorf. Um, when he came upon a trove of 1,290 coins. Coins. Archaeologists were then asked to extract the findings in its entirety and concluded that the coins were minted in the 4th century, a period from which very few coins have been discovered. The coins are a mix of mostly copper alloy, a bit of silver, it's essentially a bowl of small change, weighing in at just 0.04 ounces, minted during the reign of Emperor Constantine the Great who governed Roman, the Roman Empire from uh, 3006 to 3077 CE, or I think AD is uh, about the equivalent of CE, uh, the coins, uh, the, the coins uh, add up to around about two months' salary for a soldier at the time. The coins dating uh, back anywhere from 1332 to 1355 were left in peacetime. Look, this is a bit of a departure from when offerings and valuables were usually buried during times of unrest. Well, that's a, an interesting story there and a great find. Uh, look, uh, follow on with that, a horde of medieval, now I'm going to try and pronounce this word, it's called Bractate Coins. Brack, so that's a funny name, but it's Bractate Coins, uh, has been discovered near a uh, place in Lower Silesia, Poland. The coins were unearthed by a dog walker who notified the authorities at uh, the uh, Walshambridge branch of the provincial office for monument protection. Archaeological, archaeologists in, investigating the discovery have revealed that the coins were stored in a clay pot and date from around the first half of the 13th century AD. The coins are one-sided and made from thin sheets of metal due to limited availability of silver or gold. They originate from the mint workshops of Brandenburg, Saxony and Silesia, although their use was relatively short as the coins were usually called back regularly to be exchanged for new coins. Now the coins have been described as one of the most significant discoveries in the region as very few coins of this type survived from the period as they were melted down on an ongoing basis. They have been designated uh, the rank of an archaeological monument and as such are now owned by the straight state treasury for preservation. Now look next uh, up we're going to head back to the coffee bush kid again with his second part on a tip with reducing the sensitivity on a Profind 35. G'day folks, I'm the coffee bush kid and today we're going to talk about reducing the sensitivity in your pinpointer. Now in the last segment, we reduced the sensitivity in the pinpointer in a park setting. Today, we're going to talk about reducing your sensitivity out in the field when you found a target in the ground. Right, well here we are, we're out in the bush, we've located a target, and uh, what I want to do is first off, find out where the target generally is in the hole. So we'll fire up the old ProFine 35 pinpointer. You got that little pip, lets us know that we're right to go. We can stick that down. Oh, by the way, it's in full sensitivity. So we can go down the hole. We hear that it's somewhere around in there. But what if it's a cricket belt buckle? 
I certainly don't want to go sticking my spade through that. So what we can do is reduce our sensitivity by maybe three on the minus side, and we can go down and have a look where that is in the hole. And following around where we were before, I'm not getting a signal at all. But it's really, really pinpointed it to there, right there. And if we dig down, ah, look at that. It's a two dollar, whoop, a two dollar. And that is the case where you would reduce your sensitivity. If this had been a, uh, a cricket belt buckle or something like that, you certainly don't want to go putting your spade through the centre of it. Reduce the sensitivity so that you can find out exactly the shape of your target that you want to retrieve and you can dig it out safely. I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and that's been a quick tip for the Mine Lab Show. Okay, another uh, great contribution there from the Coffee Bush Kid. Like I said before, uh, head on over to his socials and uh, it's basically anything the Coffee Bush Kid and the feed, the links should be in the feed uh, earlier uh, in the feed for you. So jump on there and go over and uh, uh, give him a like or two. Okay, now look, uh, we're going to move straight in now to our product spotlight. And what we're looking at this time is the uh, MineLab certified secondhand detector website or page on minersden.com.au. Now we've had many people who are looking to start their prospecting uh, career or treasure hunting career, but would prefer to actually buy secondhand and save a buck or two. Many prospective purchasers that I'm speaking with always come back with the same questions. How do I know the unit's working properly? Has it been dropped or submerged in water? How do I use it? Can I get trained on how to use my pre-loved machine when you buy them second hand, obviously? Look, uh, there are many other questions as well that people are asking when they're looking for second-hand detectors. Uh, so miners then have stepped up and created Australia's only MineLab certified second-hand detector sales page at minersden.com.au. How does it work? It's easy. If you're looking to buy a pre-loved machine, uh, then uh, you purchase from minersden.com.au or in-store at Bendigo Service Centre. So it's Miners Den's uh, service centre in Bendigo with peace of mind that's been completely checked over uh, by Nathan. Uh, no other dealer in Australia is able to offer you this service as they don't have access to the full range of spare parts, nor do they have the factory trained mine lab representative on actual site here to do the correct uh, checks and things. Many other sites selling second hand detectors claim to test units, but this is often just a quick turn on hear some kind of sound and straight out onto the self shelf for sale. As an authorised MineLab service centre, we see many people who purchase these second-hand detectors uh, from other areas and they come in to find out why it's not working or how to use the unit. Now, unfortunately, in some cases, we've had to let them know the bad news, such as the coil is uh, touch sensitive, the battery is on its way out, the batteries are incorrect for the unit or they've caused corrosion, and there are a whole range of other issues that come up uh, that should have been picked up on if the units were fully tested. Uh, really, buyer beware. There are so many places that are selling them that haven't done these thorough checks and uh, it leaves you exposed to buying somebody else's dud. And they quite often may not even know that they've had a fault with their machine. The Miners Den Certified Secondhand Detectors are the only place to buy and sell secondhand mine lab deals with complete confidence that it is being sold to you by MineLab's largest independent service centre and the largest reseller of uh, MineLab product in Australia. Our pictures that are on our Miners Den certified second-hand web page are the actual units that are available for sale and not just a generic picture that has nothing to do with the actual unit on hand. Can you afford to buy anywhere else and end up carrying the can for someone else's non-performing Unchecked metal detector? Go with the trusted name in Mine Lab Metal Detectors in Australia. That's Miners Den Australia, the Mine Lab experts. We stand behind every machine that we sell second hand.
Now look, uh, on the next uh, time, I'm going to head out again this time, and I'm actually running around with the Coffee Bush Kid to uh, look for some coins and treasure. Um, you can look out for the extended version of this video, and we'll upload that to YouTube in the next couple of days. Uh, but let's have a look now at uh, Dave and the Coffee Bush Kid out detecting. Hey, I got gold fever and you wouldn't believe it I'm out chasing gold and I don't want to leave it This gold detector has got me on the run All around Australia it's got me roaming I find a piece or two that keeps me going I'm a gold detector gold... Well, we've turned, turned up at this big old tree And big old trees are magnets for people shade uh, coverage it's by the the tennis courts here off to our side they would have sat under there chased the shade all the way around they would have been sitting on the ground and dropping coins out of their pocket so that's why we're here at this one i think it'll be a pretty good spot dave what do you reckon absolutely uh I absolutely the trees as we've been talking about are a key thing for where to go and hunt for some coins and things I reckon we've got a six inch coil on that you're using I've got the 11 inch standard coil on an ox let's go and see what people have dropped when they've been sitting under the tree let's do it well well Jamie the camera dude's been off scoring a new battery for his uh, camera you've come across a target I've uncovered one and I've got a third one up there yep we've this done well this is getting into probably the older stuff we would expect under this big tree here. We might find some older uh, uh, coins and things. Now, again, you're using the six inch coil. You're still having the trouble with my bigger coil with all the trash and stuff around. And I'm getting multiple targets with each swing. So I may need to call on you to come and check a couple of mine in a moment. Cool, that'd be great. How have you gone? Well, I've got this beautiful, solid little 24 signal. Now, disclaimer, I have seen it, but for dramatic effect, we can come in and have a look at this. It's just there. The ground at this point is actually soft, but there we go. This is what we've got. That is a little pendant of some description, a medallion, I should say. Now, what I'll do is I was prepared for this. I got my old bloody nail brush. Oh yeah. Okay, look at that. You can start to see how that's covered up clean. That is a great idea, coffee bush. I need one of those nail brushes. Melton Bacchus Marsh Dancing Festival. There we go. Wow. There's not going to be too many of those left in existence, I wouldn't think, <laughs> coffee bush. No, I don't think so either. And there's no inscription to tell us any more on whose it might have been or a number or... No, it's just the maker on the back in small letters that is too small for me to read. But anyway, that's it. Melton Bacchus Marsh Dancing Festival. I haven't found any one of those before. No, nor have I. And it's your first target on this next site right in the heart of Bendigo. Well done to the coffee bush kid. And we'll move on and have a look at the next one. Whilst we're getting the battery again, I came across this target and just lazily started to put the digger into the target. If we come across here and have a look, this is what has come up. Now, I've seen this target uh, out of the ground, but that's just where it's sitting like that after I was running around with my digging tool. So I pulled it out here and look, uh, my first thoughts on what I've got here, this looks very much like, well, it looks very much like a five cent piece. What's your thoughts, uh, Coffee Bush? Yep. I reckon it was bigger than a five cent piece. It does, yes, it does have a milled edge. You can always check by running your thumbnail along them. Would you like me to clean it up for you, Dave? Absolutely, please. Got a bit of squirty air, which is just your, your bottle with your water in it. And yes, it is one of our Australian uh, sixpences. You should always attempt to clean them with water. That's George the fifth. So we know that we are somewhere between 1911 and 1936. And that's a 1935 sixpence that you've got there. Wow, okay. So we've Look, managed to get- it's been a while since I've uh, dug one of these up. That's two targets just walked in here. Bang, bang, Equinox 800 has delivered the goods as well. 
not only have we scored gold coins in this area, dug a bit of junk, but we've also come at home with, uh, well, a badge or a pendant yep. and a coin. All right, uh, as usual, great information there. Thanks very much, uh, Coffee Bush. Great getting out with you. We're going to do that again in uh, the next few weeks and see if we can't find a few more things. Uh, this time we're up now for to answer some uh, viewer questions. And the first one here comes from Damien who says, G'day, Dave. I'm wondering what makes any detector more sensitive than the other. E.g. an SDC is great, detects small nuggets perfect, uh, where the 6000 is better on bigger nuggets deeper down. Is it the coil or the higher output of the power of the module? Thanks again. Look, hi Damien, great question. There's, uh, you're always asking some fantastic questions here and thank you very, very much for that. Um, here are a number of factors. Uh, look, there's a number of factors that will affect the sensitivity and depth of any detector. For example, we'll start with the coils and the larger coil is better for getting greater depth on large objects uh, and a smaller coil is more sensitive to some of the smaller targets. So size of coil is important and it needs to be selected to suit the targets that you're actually hunting for. The different machines in the mine lab range have been designed to perform differently depending on the size of the targets. The different frequencies, frequencies in each of the models are part of this reason why. So machines such as the SDC 2300 are super sharp on some of that smaller gold, uh, whereas the GPX 5000 is able to punch a bit deeper on the larger targets. So if you have some lower frequencies uh, or a bias towards the lower frequencies, you're going to get more depth on the larger targets. If you have a bias towards the um, higher frequencies, then you're going to find that you'll get a better result on the smaller targets. Um, higher output from the control box uh, or more power going into it is also another method of punching down a bit deeper. More power uh, is going to equal, a, to a certain extent, a greater field and this helps you get a little greater depth. Now, there's a couple of uh, inhibitors there but I'm not going to go right into those. So uh, generally it's the frequencies and the size of the coil depending on which model you're using that determines uh, how you're going to go deep or small. That's a great question. Thanks again, Damien. Look, we have a question also here from Nancy uh, who asks, uh, Hi Dave, how small a grain size will a metal detector pick up on? Well, Nancy, that's a good question. It's uh, going to depend a little bit on which mine lab metal detector you're using. But a 6000 is a metal detector that is now picking up tiny gold. With a 6000, I've been able to pick up tiny pieces that weigh less than 0.005 of a gram. So it's less than 0.1 of a gram or half of 0.1 of a gram. Um, some of the other models are picking up pieces down as small as 0.1 of a gram. Now look, when I'm talking about these tiny bits of gold, it's important to note that these size bits of gold are only just being found just below the surface. But there's no other metal detector in the world that can handle the mineralisation and find those small nuggets like a mine lab. I hope that gives you a bit more of an idea uh, on how sensitive the actual mine lab metal detectors can be. And basically, if they were going any smaller, we'd have to make sure there wasn't much wind around because it could actually blow away in the wind and that's small. Lastly, we also have a question from uh, uh, Robert here. And uh, Robert has asked us a question about uh, what's a good detector for someone just starting out. So, uh, Robert, your question's going to depend on what you're actually wanting to search for. You want to look for a good serviceable unit and you mainly want to hunt for coins and relics down around the beach or around the park, then you can start with something like a Vanquish range metal detectors. Now the Vanquish 540 Pro with two waterproof coils is a good one to have a, a look at. If you want to step up a little bit in the coin and relic range, uh, then you cannot go past the Equinox 800. Uh, the Equinox 800 and the Vanquish are obviously both mine lab machines. They're manufactured here in Australia, full range of parts and support and service and everything there for them. If you're wanting to start out with gold prospecting, then uh, a good serviceable unit for the gold prospecting is the SDC 2300. You're going to come in around about the uh, 4,500, 4,100 mark at the moment for the SDC 2300. And gold detectors are a bit dearer than the coin and relic machines. So there are infantry level models like the, the 1000 or the Equinox at around about the $1,300, uh, $1,400 mark. Look, 
it doesn't matter. If you're going to be looking for super serious uh, uh, gold prospecting, then obviously you step up to something like the GPX 6000, and it's definitely worth the extra money. Um, whatever mine lab machine you decide, you'll be certain to have started your prospecting or treasure hunting journey on the right foot. Good luck, and I hope you do well when you get yourself a machine. Look, if you have a question that you'd like answered, I encourage you to post it to our Facebook page. We'll do our best to get you the right answer. Okay, moving right along here now, we're going to have a look at a gold hotspot that we've done previously, but well worth revisiting, and that is Echunga in South Australia. Echunga is a small town in South Australia located in the Adelaide Hills, just 34 kilometres southeast of Adelaide. Within a short drive from the town are the Jupiter Creek diggings and the Chapel Hill diggings. The goldfield was discovered by Chapman, Hampton and Hardyman. They accidentally found several ounces of gold in the roots of a tree. In 1852, Achunga was the first proclaimed gold field in South Australia. Rich alluvials were on Chapman's Gully and Windless Hill, with 12 ounces to the tub and 5 ounces to the dish being a common occurrence. It became the state's most important gold field with production of an estimated 200,000 ounces. And they actually found some diamonds also. In most places, the digging was easy. Loamy topsoil with soft sandy clay beneath. In the gullies it was much harder. The miners did battle with rising water and shafts caving in was a major danger. Achunga was an important staging post and by the end of 1860s two coaching companies, Hill & Co and Cobb & Co had set up stations in the town. Being close to Adelaide there's plenty to see and do. Eat out in style or choose from fresh produce at the farmer's market and cook your own. Visit one of the many farms or nearby wineries or climb aboard the Steam Ranger Heritage Railway. If you feel like walking in the footsteps of the old timers, take a walk in the Jupiter Creek Gold Driggings Trail. Check the website achunga.org to see what else you can do in the region. Well, it's been a massive show for this week, and look, thanks for joining me. Uh, it's time for me now to have a look and uh, draw the winners of tonight's lucky viewer giveaway. So just to recap, uh, we've got four $100 minus 10 gift vouchers. There's two for YouTube and two for Facebook. So look, uh, congratulations on Facebook to uh, Darren McKenzie and Nikki Miller. You guys have both scored yourselves a $100 gift voucher from minus 10. Of course, um, let Corey know in the feed uh, your details so that we can get those out to you there as well. And if we head to YouTube, Stephen uh, Gat Gutley, I think it is, G-A-T-L-E-Y, and Scott Earls, uh, you guys have both on YouTube scored yourself a Miner's Den uh, gift voucher. That gift voucher is $100. There's two of each there. Again, guys, let yourself know, uh, well, make yourself be known to Corey in the feed, and he'll be able to get those organised for you very, very quickly. Now, look, to be in with a chance uh, of being a lucky live viewer, all you need to do is let us know you're here by commenting in the feed, and I hope you're enjoying the show. Let's have a look now what's coming up on next week's uh, show. So I've got a little sneak peek here. There's all of the prospecting and treasure hunting news again uh, in our first segment that comes up. I'm going to actually catch up with Trevor live from Coil Tech in South Australia to have a chat about his new coils for the GPX 6000. Nathan has been busily working away in the last week and he's going to be back with another tech tip. I'm going to answer your questions live as I've done tonight and we'll have another segment of what have I found from the coffee bush kid. I'm Gold Digger Dave. Thanks for watching the Mind Lab Show. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe and share. Tune in next week for another episode of the Mind Lab Show.